Hi everyone, Mike here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the absolute best way to prime your miniatures. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, so obviously that is not how you should prime your miniatures. So let me show you the method that Ben and I use for our models. Step one is just to shake the can, flip it over a few times, and shake it up for a good minute or so. And here's a tip if your paint or varnish is getting low, or it's been sitting on the shelf for a long time. Fill a bowl with hot water from your tap, as hot as it will go, put the can in, and then put something heavy on top to keep it from tipping. Leave it for a minute or two to warm up to build some extra pressure, and then shake it. Alright, now for the priming. I've seen people use a lot of different holders for their priming and painting. For me, I use plastic bottle caps and white tack. Just get a small wad of it, ball it up, and smush it between the model and the cap. Now you can just hold the cap and wear a glove when you're spraying your primer, or you can attach the cap to a bottle, preferably glass. You want something heavy that isn't going to tip over from wind or the weight of the model. Even if you're priming outside, it can't hurt to wear a mask and glasses. Gusts of wind can sometimes blow the paint into your face. I like to start off by spraying the underside of the model at a 45 degree angle. As you can see, I'm doing very short bursts, and I'm not starting directly on the model. I'm starting slightly off to the side and dragging quickly across the model. Then I move to spraying face on, followed by 45 degrees from above. I usually give four quick bursts to each facing, turning the model 90 degrees after each one. And each burst lasts only about half a second. I check the model for any bare patches, then turn the can upside down and clear the nozzle. This is the model I just primed, and it has a nice thin layer of primer. There are a couple little spots that aren't completely covered, but that's fine. There's still enough primer to let the paint adhere. Anytime I do find a spot that needs a touch-up, I'll do that with a brush-on primer. I don't want to risk getting too much paint on the other parts of the model. The next thing I want to talk about is why to use primer. If you're relatively new to painting, you might wonder why bother with a primer? Is it actually a necessary step? Here I have two models, one with no primer and one that was just primed. I'm going to add a bit of paint to each and show you the difference. My paint is thinned, but you can see that it's sticking to the primer. And when I move my brush over it, the paint stays put for the most part. Now I'm going to add the same color to the unprimed miniature. The first thing I notice is that the paint beads up into droplets a bit on the model instead of laying flat. I also noticed that if the paintbrush is wet, it will sometimes wipe away that first layer of paint I added, so I have to redo some spots. If I work at it though, and let the paint dry, I can get a layer of paint to eventually stick to the model. There is one more problem though, and I'm going to set both of these aside for a couple minutes and let the paint completely dry to show you. If I rub at the paint after it's dry, it comes off on the unprimed miniature. If I use the same amount of force on the primed miniature, the paint stays put. Now, how do you know which primer you should use? Well, some people swear by primers like Rust-Oleum and Krylon. I personally wouldn't use these on anything except terrain, only because they go on slightly thicker, and I have had them spatter paint in the past. Vallejo, Army Painter, and Citadel are all very good, but for me, it comes down to whichever I find easiest to apply. I mostly use Citadel Primer because I like the nozzle. It feels like it's going on smoother, though it is definitely the most costly primer. If price is a big factor for you, then definitely go with Army Painter. Or if you're painting something big like Terrain, you might want to go as cheap as possible with Krylon or Rust-Oleum. Anyway, that's my two cents about priming and primers. If you have any questions or opinions you'd like to share about primers, please leave them in the comments section. I hope you found this video useful, and thanks for watching.